we'll go ahead and get started. We're, I was waiting for Commissioner Smith, but uh, if everybody will just stand, we'll say the Pledge of Allegiance, please. Pledge of Allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. All right. Thank you, everybody. Thanks for coming out today. Thank you to the Bridges Center and their staff for helping us put this together. And thanks, thank you a lot to the IT department that were able to get us set up for all the microphones for everybody here. So we're going to just jump right into it. The presentations by the different departments, kind of talking about what those services would look like, and and then it, we'll we'll wrap it up with the the fiscal forecast. So we'll start out. Um, with the process itself, and that'll be our attorney, Michael Rodriguez. There we go. Okay, it is on. All right, good afternoon, folks. The following is an overview of what are the legal methods for annexation pursuant to Florida statutes. There are various methods of annexation. It's not just one uh, type of um, process. So for background, I'm gonna give everybody the background of the different types, and different processes for annexation um, that could affect and may affect the South Apopka area. One of the uh, first methods for annexation is probably the one that if you follow city government or any local government, you're probably most familiar with. And that's what's, that's what's deemed as voluntary annexation. Voluntary annexation is when I, a, a, you, a, I or you or anyone as a property owner wishes to annex into a city. This process is started by the property owner. The property owner wants to go into the city and applies to the city for annexation. The state requires that that property meets certain standards. Namely, if your property has to be what is called abutting the uh, city limits. So you have to be up against the city limits. You have to be compact, which it means you have to, it's, it has to be a, uh, kind of compact, square, rectangular, one of the things the courts do not like to look at are what are called kind of finger-like projections out. If you want to try to keep the boundaries of a city to be kind of compact and not have these type of alien tentacles, even though some cities in Florida have that shape, unfortunately. Um, so that type of application is made to the city. If you, meet the if you meet the standards that the state sets out and your property meets them, you go to the city commission, the city council, the city council will vote on it, and then you are annexed into the city. After that process, then you'll have questions as to changing your zoning, changing your land use to meet the city's requirements from the county. Um, at this time, there is nothing to stop any property owner in South Apopka who meets that, those uh, qualities and criteria under the statute to annex into the city. If your property is up against the city limits, is compact, you would then submit the application to the city, pay the annexation fee, um, basically show that your property meets the, uh, the standards that the state sets out, and you can be annexed into the city. Um, there can be multiple annexations, but but what ends up happening is you have to make sure that at each time that property has to be what's called contiguous to the city. You have to touch the city limits. You cannot jump across. Also, when it comes to voluntary annexations, your annexation cannot create what's called an enclave. An enclave is a unincorporated area that's surrounded basically on all four sides by, uh, by city limits. So these are pockets or holes um, within a city limit. So you cannot create an enclave uh, as part of the voluntary annexation process. Now, the second type of annexation process is probably the one that's of most interest now because it's the one that's being uh, co contemplated as part of all these workshops, and that's annexation by a municipality. This is a method where the city looks to acquire the property. In the end, the ultimate decision is on the voters of the area to be annexed, as well as the voters of the city to be doing the annexing. Um, this is done by referendum, but there are certain prerequisites. 
and steps that need to be done prior to getting to that point, to even getting to the, to the annexation. And one of the things that the first important step that has to be crossed, the state statute provides that if an area to be annexed by a city, um, the city has to examine and review if 70% of the area to be annexed is owned by corporations or other legal entities or property owners who are not electors of the area to be annexed, then the city must obtain the consent, the city doing the annexing must obtain consent of 50%, of more than 50%, and legally that means 50% plus one of those property owners before the question can even be called to a vote or the ordinance to approve the annexation even comes before the council. So that is the first step. This is kind of a, a protection for those property owners that aren't electors who wouldn't have a say in the election to annex um, that their property is going to then be annexed into the city and then they would be subject to city regulations, to city enforcement, um, to city property taxes. So, um, in, the, in, for, in the specific example of South Apopka, the city would have to then review basically the area to be designated for, oh, there's no map, the area to be designated for annexation. We would then have to examine who are the record property owners of that area. Um, that could be obtained by going through the property appraiser's office. And then upon that review, we would look to see what is the percentage of owners in that area that are either corporate or do not reside in South Apopka. If that number is more than 70%, then there's going to have to be a, we're going to have to obtain the consent of at least 50% 50, 50 plus one of those owners prior to there being any type of what would be annexation by the city. I don't want to call it involuntary annexation because the property owners have a say in the vote. If that percentage is less than 70%, then we would proceed forward. And there is, a there is that mechanism, which would be, it's done then by ordinance. There will be an ordinance that proposes the annexation of that area. That area must be contiguous, compact, um, similar to a voluntary annexation. Then once that ordinance is adopted through a method, the same method of any ordinance, um, it would require two public hearings the final effective date of that ordinance is subject to a referendum that would be placed to the, to the voters. Now the city has the option of presenting that referendum question to both the area to be annexed and the, and the, and the residents of the city of Apopka who are doing the annexing. In that event, that vote, both class of voters must approve the annexation by majority vote. If one, if annexation fails on either one. If the city says yes, but South Apopka says no, or if South Apopka says yes and the city says no, the annexation fails. You actually need both groups to vote in favor of annexation, and that would be annexation by municipality. The, uh, third, the third method, and, there's, and then there's, I mean, there's other, I'm gonna go too much into the weeds as to what are the other certain studies have to be made, certain presentations have to be made to the county, prior to this item being presented for a vote um, of the, uh, the residents. One of the third, for background, third methods of annexation is what's called enclave annexation. Unfortunately, the area of South Apopka is too large to be considered for enclave annexation. The state requires that if you have an enclave that's 110 acres or less, that it could be annexed into the city by agreement between the city and the county. Usually that's an interlocal agreement in which the city and the county agree to divvy up the responsibilities for maintenance um, and for other types of jurisdiction, for enforced law enforcement, code enforcement, uh, mainly also for transfer of the roads from county jurisdiction to city jurisdiction. And that's an agreement that, then, that is then presented to both governing bodies, in this case, the Orange County Commission and then the city council. If adopted, then you would have an annexation of an enclave. But as I said, uh, South Apopka is too large to fall under that, and that's 110 acres. Um, a minimum, sorry, a maximum of 110 acres. Uh, since the area that is being considered and studied for annexation for South Apopka is greater than 110 acres, that method of annexation would be, is not eligible in this case. Now the fourth 
and this is for background, the fourth method of annexation are called interlocal, uh, interlocal service boundary agreements. This is a method that's used in other parts of the state of Florida to uh, allow for a county and a city to work to eventually um, configure the boundaries of a city where the city and county agree to shared responsibilities, to transition of responsibilities, setting up a framework, setting up timelines. This type of an agreement also allows for properties to be annexed into the city, and they do not have to be what I, what I stated during voluntary annexation. They don't have to be contiguous. You don't have to uh, be up against the city. If you're within an area that has been designated by the city and county as the interlocal service boundary inside that interlocal service boundary agreement, and throughout the state, these are known as ISBAs. If you fall within the red line of the ISBA, you can come in to be annexed and you don't have to touch the city. Um, certain examples of this, if you ever want, if you go online and you're curious, take a look at a city map of the city of New Smyrna Beach. Uh, it is Swiss cheese. There's New Smyrna is basically two separate cities. There's a group west of I-95, group, grouping east of I-95, and there's a pocket quilt of properties that are in the city, out of the city, Eventually, the plan is, and this was by agreement with both the city and the county, to get together to eventually merge that and become one city. One of the reasons that this is almost dead upon arrival is that at least the prior management folks at Orange County um, are adamantly against entering into any type of ISBA with any city in the, uh, in the county. We have a joint planning agreement. The city of Apopka and Orange County have a joint planning agreement but expanding that joint planning agreement to include some of the requirements and guidelines for ISBAs, um, it's almost a bridge too far for the county to cross at this time. So right now, the most realistic options for potential annexation would include either piecemeal voluntary annexation, so those properties that meet those guidelines and criteria can come in, or the annexation by, we'll call it annexation by referendum, but and, uh, as long as all of those standards are met, first we get, if, if we need the consent of the property owners, that has to be obtained before the city can even consider passing the ordinance and putting it up for a referendum of the voters. So that's the legal background and the process for annexation. The state does not allow for any other type of method of annexation. You must be consistent with Florida statutes. Cities cannot come up with their own ways or means to annex properties. You either follow the requirements in Chapter 171 of Florida Statutes, or you cannot annex at all. And that's, that's what is the, the city is bound by and the county is bound by when it comes to annexations. Thank you, Michael. All right, next up, Jim Hitt, uh, Community just, Development. Uh, just by way of, um, I know we jumped right into this, but again, you know, this is it's a unique situation where a, a, a city and city council from the city of Apopka and we're in Orange County property, so I'm not sure that everybody here in the room even knows who we are and why we're having this conversation. So um, if, you're, if this is the first time seeing us, it might be appropriate if we just do a quick round of introductions so that everybody knows who we are and why we're even broaching this conversation at this point in time. So um, do you wanna? Okay. I'll start with me. Hi, uh, welcome each and every one of you. Thank you for coming out tonight. I am Commissioner Diane Velasquez. How long have you been? Oh, okay. <laughs> How long have I been in office? Uh, I was in office from 214 to 218, and then I ran for office uh, from 220 until present. Okay. And I'm Commissioner Kyle Becker. I've been on the city council for uh, six years now. Um, and again, I, I think just to kind of set the table, uh, and I'll let the others speak for themselves, but during all of our campaigns or running for this office, the conversation on this topic of annexation, broad annexation of South Apopka has been brought up uh, to a certain degree. And so we met on this, um, what was it, October or November? I'm trying to think of the exact date. So it looks like we're gonna have the same presentation. So I'll speak for myself personally. If I don't speak up a whole bunch during the, so it was uh, November 29th. If I don't speak up during some of the present presentation, we did receive this back in November, and I'm assuming it's the same information. Um, but again, it's, it's more about for us to hear from you all um, of what would drive you to consider annexing into the city of Apopka. And so 
as we as we go through this uh, through this meeting, kind of have that lens um, because really it's all about hearing from you all and what your desires are and how we collectively make that happen. Um, so again, nice to meet you and look forward to it. Hi there, Mayor Brian Nelson, City of Apopka. Commissioner Alexander Smith was elected in 2018, re-elected in 2022. Uh, Commissioner Nick Nesta, I was elected uh, last year in March and very excited to be here. And we are looking forward to hearing from you guys in any capacity, whatever your opinions are, thoughts, any questions you have, please bring them up. Um, it's a very valuable time for all of us to hear from you. Thank you. All right, Jim. Thank you, I'm Jim Hitt, the Community Thank Development you. Director. I've been living in Apopka for a little over 30 years. So, uh, let me zip ahead here. This is the interesting part, by the way. This is all the statistical information. I want to compliment Orange, Orange County for getting a lot of the data uh, to us uh, to us for the previous meeting and for this meeting. So this is the original uh, map that we had put together to try to decipher what it, what makes up South Apopka. Um, and basically, it's all enclave areas. Uh, it's surrounded by city property for just about the whole area. Uh, Orange County did a little bit of more deciphering and, and put together a, a nice little map that uh, as I go through these slides, it'll have a lot of the statistical information itself. But we're made up, uh, it's, it's about uh, a little over 1,000 acres. Uh, there's 2,340 parcels within that area that are in unincorporated Orange County. This is one of those questions I always get, uh, you know, I, I live in Apopka, can you tell me what my land use is or what my zoning is? And I always ask their address and then I you know, plug it into the GIS um, information database for Orange County Property Appraiser. And lo and behold, a lot of times people don't, they have an Apopka mailing address, but it's not actually in the corporate city limits of Apopka. So that's one of those things that's always in your, it, it is on your tax records and it shows either APK or ORG for Orange County or Apopka. So in this case, <clears throat> the residential properties, like I mentioned, there's, there, there are uh, 2,185 2, residential properties. Um, totals about uh, seven, 700, 714 acres of that uh, 1,000 acres that, uh, that, that is in, that, in this district. Of those, uh, we have 1,036 have homestead exemption. That means obviously they're getting exemptions from the government in regards to their taxes. So that, that's a little, it, it's a little over 47% of those properties have homestead exemptions. This is the, uh, uh, this is the actual, it shows the, the number of units there are for each of the properties. We've got a couple higher density areas um, in, the, in the district. Uh, one actually has a little over 100, I think it's 120 units actually is uh, uh, for, for one of those districts. This is all kind of progressive. So this is the, uh, the residential uh, portion shows the market value, uh, the assessed value and the taxable value. Those are the ones that are on your uh, tax records that actually shows what your property is actually worth in terms of the taxes themselves. Um, so this, the taxable value, that's after the homestead exemption that this is put in. So um, in 2021 taxes, they, the um, Orange County collected a total of uh, $3,528,000 uh, in taxes for just the residential property alone. And then we've got the, uh, the breakdown for commercial and industrial and governmental, and uh, I think there's one other in there that we'll get to. Uh, agriculture is in there also. So the commercial and industrial properties, and there's not a lot in this area. This is one of those areas that um, obviously we'd like to have a little bit more so that uh, we have uh, the work at home type, uh, type operations where you can you know, drive down the street or walk down the street and go to work and then come back uh, rather than going down to Orlando or any other city. Uh, we like to capture those, uh, the, those businesses here versus going out anyplace else. So of this, uh, approximately 84 acres is the, is the commercial. That's only 3% of the taxable value that's in the area. This is the, uh, just a land use review with the employment uh, uh, sector. Um, agriculture, forestry, fishing, hunting, that, that's 1,500 jobs in, that, in, this, in this total area. Uh, the next highest is the, uh, the 178, which is waste management and reme remediation. And then we've got wholesale trade and construction 
manufacturing. Uh, it, it's a, it, it does a full, you know, fair, fairly good gambit between the different types of jobs that are available. But there's, uh, there's about 2,265 jobs in, in South Apopka alone. The next two, um, this is the, uh, the, the commercial and the industrial property. Um, that's a little bit off the slide, but uh, the industrial, let me get the right number for you, because that's, like I said, that's off. I just want to make sure you get the numbers if you want them. The industrial is uh, 103000 uh, $12, which is 2.8%. And then the commercial is 28,000, so it doesn't make a whole, uh, a, a large majority of the overall taxes. So the, the lion's share is, is the residential with about 3.5 million. <clears throat> this is the tax difference between Orange County and, and the city of Apopka itself. There's, it's only a 0.1396 uh, uh, mills difference uh, between uh, the, the, the taxable value in the county and the taxable value in the city. Basically what happens is when you annex into the city, the unincorporated fire and the general, and I'm sorry, the unincorporated fire and the um, the law portion, the right up up top, those two millage rates come off your tax rolls, and then the city tax, which includes the the police and fire, is added on, and that's the difference of the 1.1396 mills. Um, agriculture operations. This is another one that. It, Obviously, it's a, it's a popka, so we do have a lot of agriculture in the area. But in this case, this area, it's uh, it accounts for uh, $7,800 in taxes, or 0.2% of the overall taxable uh, taxes in 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 the district area. Institutionals even lower. Um, it's uh, 224.6 acres. A lot of that because it's institutional doesn't necessarily pay taxes. Um, that there's 25 parcels in, the, in this case uh, for, that are currently under institutional religious for only 24 acres. And that's, uh, it, it, it still ends up accounting for about $3,700 uh, or $37,000 in taxes or 1%. Um, taxable values, <clears throat> this is the, uh, the, main, the, the, the main difference between the acreages and, and the values. Uh, you can see the overall taxable value is, we've got a large tax base in the area that are based on, again, the residential portion, which is the 3.58 uh, uh, million for the out overall taxes. And that's, that's all I have on this portion. I'm sorry. <laughs> all right. Thank you. Thank you, Jim. Appreciate it. Next up, Chief McKinley. Can we just, uh, can I just ask a question? Like after every presentation, are we allowing any questions or we're going we're, to do it? We're going to do end? everything and then come back. Okay. Good afternoon. Um, my presentation is a little bit shorter than the first presentation I did, mainly because I took the financial part out of it. During our first presentation, it was for the commissioners and just to show what some of the physical impacts could be. I've removed all that. Other than that, it is uh, pretty much the same. So, uh, <clears throat> Although we'll cover South of Popka, our presentation will address challenges we currently face and how those challenges will... I like that. I was going to keep it. <laughs> uh, <clears throat> how those challenges will be affected by any large annexation of an existing built-out community, not just South of Popka. Each year, we plan a budget for the current and integrated and intended, I'm sorry, growth of the city to ensure we will have resources available to provide proper law enforcement services to our existing community and the planned development. The annexation of any large built-out community will have, a, will have to be planned and budgeted prior to annexation to ensure we're able to meet the needs of our current planned and proposed annexed communities. Without proper long-term strategic planning and budget preparation, all these communities could see an immediate and significant decrease in their law enforcement service. The Popka Police Department prides itself on the level of service we provide to our community, and we find ourselves struggling to maintain that level of service due to the present lack of law enforcement applicants, increasing crime, and significant growth. The intent of our presentation today is to inform the residents of South Apopka of the current status of the Apopka Police Department and what it would take to ensure we can provide them with the same level of service or better than they currently receive from the Orange County Sheriff's Office. 
<clears throat> the current status of the Apopka Police Department. Before we can look at the annexation of any large built out community that will immediately require law enforcement services, we must first look at the resources we have to service our current community and what it will take to continue to provide our current level of service to our existing residents, planned developments, and the proposed annexed area. The police department's current per capita and its officers per thousand residents is 2.08 when we are fully staffed. Our per capita of 2.08 is lower than the state average of 2.33 and lower than the surrounding city's averages of 2.31. The police department currently has 13 police officer vacancies, which brings our actual per capita to 1.83 officers per 1,000 residents. Additionally, our officers per square mile of service area is 3.44 while the surrounding agencies average 5.6 officers per square mile. Currently, the Apopka Police Department is authorized 122 sworn positions but has 13 vacancies. If we intend to provide the same level of service or better to the residents living in the proposed annexation area of South Apopka that we provide to our current residents, we have to ensure we have the proper staffing in place. We have to ensure we can provide service to the residents of the annex area by ensuring we have the proper per capita and officer per square mile ratios. These ratios need to be aligned, need to be aligned with the state average and that of the surrounding agencies. In order to attain the state per capita average of 2.33 officers per thousand residents, our authorized sworn positions to just, re, to just service our current residents should be approximately 136 sworn officers. This number of 136 authorized sworn positions is not just based on per capita, but is supported by the number of officers per square mile in the surrounding jurisdictions. It was also confirmed by the independent staff study conducted by the Center for Public Safety during the Public Safety Building Needs Assessment. Based on these numbers, the police department currently needs an additional 14 authorized sworn positions. This is in addition to the 13 vacancies we currently have. Based on the boundaries provided for the area to be annexed, the Orange County Planning Department estimates the area covers 1,082 acres or approximately 1.69 square miles. The city of Popka currently covers approximately 35.5 square miles. In fiscal year 21-22, the Apopka Police Department responded to 84,000, a little over 84,000 calls for service, which breaks down to approximately 7,036 calls for service per month or 2,300 calls for service per square mile. In 2021, the Orange County Sheriff's Office responded to 7,600 calls for service in the proposed annexation area of approximately 1.69 square miles. In 2022, the Sheriff's Office is on pace to answer approximately 8,900 calls for service in the area proposed to be annexed. This equates to approximately 745 calls for service per month or 5,200 calls for service per square mile. Annexing the 1.69 square miles of South Apopka result, would result in an approximate increase in overall calls for service of 10.59%. This increase in calls for service is significant at this time due to our current personnel shortage and our below average per capita and officers per square mile. At this time, we do not have the personnel on board to absorb this increase in calls for service. In addition to this increase in calls for service, it is important to note that we are currently seeing an increase in calls for service within our current service area. Just like other jurisdictions across the country, we are seeing our crime numbers increasing, an increase in calls for service, and numbers that are returning to our pre-pandemic numbers. <clears throat> According to the Orange County Planning Division within the area to be annexed, there are are 2,185 built residential units and 387 vacant residential lots. According to the City of Apopka Community Development Department in 2022, there were an average of 2.72 persons per household in the City of Apopka. Based on these numbers, the proposed annexation area would incorporate approximately 5,900 new residents into the City of Apopka. To maintain our current per capita of 2.08 officers per 1,000 residents, we would need an additional 12 police officer to, officers to ensure we are providing the residents in the annexed area with at least the same level of service we provide our current residents. If we want to achieve the state average of 2.33 officers per 1,000 residents in the annexed area, we would need an additional 14 police officers for patrol and one additional school resource officer. However, due to the number of calls for service generated in the area to be annexed, these numbers are probably low. If we annex the area under consideration without first putting these resources in place, 
our per capita would drop from 2.08 to 1.89 officers per 1,000 residents. These numbers are just for sworn police officers and do not account for the additional civilian staff that we will need due to the agency's growth. Remember, we currently have 13 vacancies that we need to fill, so the additional 14 officers needed for the annex area, annexed area would bring the total number of officers needed by the Apopka Police Department to 27. With regards to the 2,185 built residential units, these include an apartment complex, an assisted living home, and some rooming houses, which possibly increase the density above the 2.72 residents per household that the city of Apopka uses. <clears throat> so the actual number of citizens residing in the area may be a little bit more than the estimated 5,900. The 387 vacant lots within the proposed annexation area vary in size and could be built out with a higher density. In addition to the police officers needed to patrol the proposed annexation area, as I mentioned, there's an elementary school, Phyllis Wheatley, and we would need an SRO to be assigned to it. This increases our number of officers needed to a minimum of 15. <clears throat> as growth continues to occur across the city, it is expected that our population will increase by approximately 27,000 new residents within the next 10 years. The exact timing of the growth is unknown. However, at this time, growth across the city of Apopka is happening at a rapid pace. This growth will continue and will require an additional 56 police officers just to maintain our current per capita of 2.08 officers per 1,000 residents, which again is below the state average of 2.33 officers per 1,000. If, we if we try to obtain the current state average of 2.33 officers per 1,000 residents, we would need an additional 63 authorized law enforcement positions. This is in addition to our current needs to fill vacant positions, increase our per capita, and provide law enforcement services to, to the proposed annexation area. These numbers are only for sworn personnel, do not include support staff such as dispatchers, records clerks, et cetera, that would be needed over the next five years to support the sworn staff and accommodate this growth. The planned and future growth of the city will continue to increase and our needs in the future will even be greater. Every budget year we come to the city council with adjusted numbers due to the increase in homes under construction or planned, and although this trend may slow down due to the current economy, I don't believe any of us see this trend stopping. <clears throat> any attempt to annex a large build-out community around the city of Apopka would require significant strategic planning to ensure we could meet the needs of our current and planned communities as well as a community being annexed into the city. We need to ensure that we can provide the residents of the annexed properties with the same level of law enforcement service we provide our current residents while also ensuring we don't, do not decrease the level of service we provide to our existing residents as a result of the annexation. Although we're making progress in filling our current vacancies, as mentioned, we currently have 13 authorized positions to fill. In addition to the 13 vacancies, if we want to achieve the state average per capita of 2.33 officers per 1,000 residents, we need an additional 14 authorized sworn positions. If we annex a proposed area, we would, we would need at least an additional 14 officers in addition to the 14 needed in case our, to increase our per capita. Based on the information provided, if we were to annex the residents of South Apopka without a long-term strategic plan in place, I do not believe we can provide the residents of South Apopka with the same level of law enforcement service they currently receive. Our current communication center is built out. We don't have room to add any more staff until we complete the new public safety building. Good news is uh, they're looking like maybe two, two and a half years and we can have that built. So <clears throat> we also lack the space in our current building to house more personnel. This by no means means that we cannot provide services in the future if we properly plan for them in advance. However, it will take several years for us to be able to provide South of Popka with adequate law enforcement services while ensuring we continue to provide the same level of service to our current residents. Annex considerations. If we were to annex this area, we would be looking at hiring 42 police officers to ensure, to ensure we continue to provide everyone with the same level of service we currently provide. Hiring 42 police officers in, in today's market is going to be challenging. We just recently learned that three equivalent, equivalent training classes, out of, which is out-of-state certified police officers, were canceled due to a lack of registered students. We should not annex any large area with a current residential population without first having the resources in place to cover the annexed area. Not having the resources in place prior to the annexation would cause a decrease in law enforcement services for our current residents and those residing in the annexed area. 
During this presentation, we've only addressed sworn police officers. I've said this a couple times, but we're going to need additional um, staff, such as communications technicians, records clerks, and possibly an additional code enforcement officer. There we go. Can we do this? Yeah, we can annex South Apopka. <clears throat> we can accomplish a large annexation of a surrounding built-out area. However, it is going to take strategic planning and preparation to accomplish. First, we have to ensure our current level of service we provide our existing residents is at least equal to the state and local average of officers per 1,000 and officers per square mile. We need to make certain our staffing levels at all times safeguard the well-being of our police officers. We also need to ensure we properly prepare for the currently approved and planned growth the city is experiencing. Finally, we need to have the resources in place prior to the annexation of any large populated area to ensure we can immediately provide them with at least the same level of service they are currently receiving. If the residents of South Apopka wish to be annexed into the city of Apopka, the Apopka Police Department will be there to assist in working on a strategic plan that will ensure we have the proper law enforcement coverage. In summary, if the citizens of South Apopka wish to be annexed into the city of Apopka, we will work with the community and city leaders to develop a strategic plan that ensures we can provide proper law enforcement services to our current residents and those in South Apopka. Unfortunately, at this time, we cannot provide them with the same level of law enforcement service they currently receive from the Orange County Sheriff's Office. This does not mean that in the future we cannot provide them with the same level of service or better if we take the time to bring the stakeholders together and develop a well thought out strategic plan. With the proper resources in place, the men and women of the Apopka Police Department would be able to address the additional calls for service and strive to ensure the residents of South Apopka are provided with the same level of law enforcement service our current residents receive. With that, I'll turn it over to Chief Wylam. <coughs> Thank right. you. Chief yeah. Wylam. Well, hold on, Chief McKinley. Uh, I was following along until we said the 42 number. I tried to run. Yeah, uh, <laughs> no, I mean, so understanding we have 13 uh, um, vacancies currently, 14 if we were to contemplate annexation, and then on slide 30 we talk about hiring 42 in order to annex. That I'm not following the that math. That includes the 14 also that we need to reach the state average per capita. So 14, 14, and 13 is 42? So 13? I'm sorry, it's, it's 15 for South Apopka with the school resource officer. 14 additional to reach our per capita, the state average per capita of 2.33, and the 13 vacancies we currently have should be somewhere around 42. So I'm, I'm I did check my numbers because I know you're going to. <laughs> well, yeah, I mean, 13 plus 14, obviously, 27. 27. But that, because on slide 27, that said that that gets us to the 2.33 officers per 1,000. And then um, we need the 15 The one for, with the one additional resource officer, so that would be 28, not 42. I think you're double counting on that last page because um, you talk about filling the current 13 sworn officers. 13 vacancies. 14 additional offers to meet the, 14 the per capita. Additional okay. offers to meet the state Which per capita. Which is 27 and 15 for South Apopka. 42. Okay. That, the per capita is not, in, that's just where we need to be to, for gotcha. our current okay. residents. So you're not trying to, to do the math formula on 31. You're just, it's not represented there. Okay. I apologize if I made any confusion. Okay. No, 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 I, I follow now. You know I always check my numbers. No, 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 you're, you're right. Checked. I just want to make sure I was following correctly. <laughs> we good? Yep. Okay, thank you. Chief Wilem. Good afternoon, everyone. Um, you're going to hear a lot of the same numbers uh, that Chief McKinley is speaking of as far as um, uh, population and things like that, but I want to dive into uh, specific to the fire department. Um, uh, currently, our municipal city limits, so the city of Apopka, are 35.5 square miles. Uh, Orange County contract, uh, we cover an additional 60, with the Orange County contract, additional 65.19 uh, square miles. So. Quite a large area we cover with the fire department, separate from the police department, because we already have a contractual agreement with the north side of Orange, Orange County. Oh, can you hear me? Here we go. That better. I'm sorry. Can we start over. <laughs> okay. Um, 
But basically, our current uh, municipal limits cover 35.5 square miles. Uh, we also have a contract area on the north side of our district, which we uh, contract with Orange County to cover Orange County Station, old Orange County Station 29. So that total area we cover is different than the police department. We co cover a total of 65.19 square miles. Um, the population density uh, of our current city is 116, 1,616 residents per square mile, including the contract area is 957 residents per square mile. The area to be annexed is approximately 1.69 square miles. Uh, again, with those 2,185 built residential units and the average of 2.72 per household, uh, there's gonna be approximately 5,900 uh, 5, new residents. Uh, that's a population density of uh, 3516 per mile. So uh, quite, quite a, a dense area for us. Um, as Chief McKinley was speaking about uh, this, the Fire Department also has a average um, per thousand of 2.3 in our just the city alone. Uh, in the contract area, it's 2.11 firefighters per thousand. So again, that's something we want to make sure that we maintain um, with uh, the possible annexation uh, for both our current residents and uh, um, potential new residents. The call volume in this uh, study area I got with uh, Orange County's uh, uh, fire Rescues Planning Division, uh, Chief Rios, um, to gather some of this information. And in 2020 and 21, the, the study area um, responded to 1,554 EMS calls, uh, 186 fire calls, and 68 miscellaneous calls for a total of 1,808 uh, calls for the study area specifically. Um, st currently, Station uh, 28 covers uh, uh, South Apopka, area and it's something we would be working with them as well. Um, again, our current call volume for our city, our station one runs uh, 3,319 calls per service per year. The South of Popka uh, study area, 1,808 calls per service area we just talked about. Um, and you can see the rest of our stations uh, uh, fall below that, 1,744 for station two, and you can see as they go. Uh, basically, this means it would be a 16.4% increase total for our fire department if we were to annex. Um, based on the density of the area, based on the call volume of the area, it would be recommended that we need to add an additional station. Um, what's that going to take? Um, again, additional fire station required, hiring of 18 firefighters. Uh, 15 would be, so it would be five on shift per day. The additional three would be for people needing time off. In other words, we have to hire over hire for it and allow enough people to be off for that time. So 18, 18 firefighters. Um, again, capital costs with a new station, new engine, um, and uh, our city administrator is going to get more into that stuff for now. But to echo uh, what Chief McKinley said earlier, any ex annexation of a large community definitely involves significant planning. Uh, these, these resources we are talking about getting in place need to be in place uh, before um, so we can continue, continue to serve the current community and the community being annexed. Um, resources, again, need to be in place prior. We don't want to do this because without this, we would significantly decrease response times to both current and potential future residents and also units available to our service area. And that's it. Thank you, Chief. Next up. Bradley Williams, Parks and Rec. Well, they, the, the, yes. Bradley, go ahead. Bradley Williams, Parks and Rec Director. Uh, good afternoon. <clears throat> I'll be brief. Um, when looking at the annex, uh, annexed area or potential annexed area, there are two areas uh, of recreation facilities that we would look at just, again, to plan. No guarantee that any of these would come our way. Um, one of those is Wheatley Park, uh, located by the elementary school. Uh, some property highlights, it's six acre park, it includes basketball courts, tennis courts, fitness path, playground, picnic area, rental pavilion, and sand volleyball. Uh, we estimate the annual maintenance cost of this to be a little over 44, just under $45,000. And we would 
assume these services through our contractual relationship with our um, landscaper. Uh, just of note, this park is a joint use park between Orange County Public Schools and Orange County government. Um, OCPS owns the land, Orange County maintains and, and has installed the park. The other uh, recreation facility is actually where we're at today, the John H. Bridges Community Center. Property highlights 14.15 uh, acres. Uh, it provides a multitude of services uh, through Orange County, uh, the Community Action Partnership, educational programs, job training, senior services, home energy efficiency assistance, and a Head Start program. Um, Orange County was uh, gracious enough to provide us some of their annual maintenance cost estimates just as a, a reference point. Uh, we plugged in um, some estimated annual personnel costs of note. This doesn't include any benefits. Uh, that would be determined on how we would staff the, the facility if that came to that point. And that's all we have for Parks and Rec. Thank you, Radley. Here. Next up, Dio. Come on. Staff. We sure. sure that would be at that point it would be discussions between the city and the county on whether the county would want to give the facility to the city or if the county continued operation. No guarantees. That's just correct. Correct. This is just assessing the landscape and possible options that might happen. Yep. Good afternoon, Mayor, Commissioner, and community residents. Representative. You get close to the mic there, yes. Thank you. With respect to my presentation outlined for today, I would talk about infrastructure and basis of cost estimate, the maintenance services, and the summary of public service. The infrastructure and the basis of my presentation is based on the annex area is 1.69 square mile. There's 25.84 miles of roadway, 94 acres of right of way, 14 retention ponds, seven is non-MSBU, seven MSBU, 10 miles of curb street, and 22,200 2, residents. The maintenance, the maintenance service, should this be annexed, we are going to provides the water, sewer, and reclaimed services, sanitation, street maintenance, stormwater well maintenance, and there is some existing contract and agreement which we will have to take over. With respect to the water, sewer, and reclaimed services, you are already, the annex area of South Parkway is already within the existing utility service area. So limited reclaimed customers um, is in this area. And this area is within a septic to sewer B, B map area. What is happening in this area, in annexation would not affect this because you're already receiving that service from the city of Apopka. With respect to sanitation, the sanitation is being provided now by Orange County. So should city of Apopka, should you annex in city of Apopka, the service at which we'll, we will be providing is two new residential pick, um, pick up routes, one bulky route, and one new recycle route per week. For us to do so, we have to have a startup requirement cost. It will involve one new residential uh, um, automated sanitation truck, one new cloth truck, one new rear load of for yard waste, and three new operators, and two new laborers, because this will be a new service for this area. We, well, we don't have the equipment or the labor to provide that, ser that services. The annual operating cost will be estimated in, in the amount of 600K, but I think that will be come out in a wash from, this, from the fee that you will be paying. With respect to street maintenance, we will be providing the right of way mowing, potholes, base repair, pavement signing, existing sidewalk, well repair, street sweeping, tree trimming, street resurfacing, and system calls. In order for us, this is a currently service is provided to, to you by Orange County. If that should be annexed into, into the city of Apopka, 
The startup cost will be we will need two new maintenance workers, we will need one new truck, and one new administrative assistant. The annual operating cost will be 600K in order to provide that, that service. With respect to stormwater um, maintenance services, we have the non MSBU st stormwater pond maintenance, ditch and swale, stormwater pipe. Um, jet and inlet repair, and these are all infrastructure the miner will repair that you may even see in the city that you, that you maybe need, need to be done. We estimate that you will not have a, well, any startup cost for that because you will be paying a utility fee, right, which is $25 per month, and that will be able to cover that cost. With respect to the existing contract, Currently now, there is an MSBU contract for retention pond and an MSBU for street lighting. The city of Apopka residents have that with Orange County. So there will have to be a, di a discussion with them should the annexation take place um, that we will be having to take over these, these agreements and we will continue to maintain those ponds and the street light as per that agreement. So in summary, if this annexation to, to take place, we have for sanitation, we have a startup cost of 1.6 million dollars, and the annual operating cost will be 600K. Should this take place, I think that the fees that you are going to, have to pay will cover this. Just the startup cost will be something new will have to be covered. With respect to the street cost, the startup cost will be 250K, and the annual cost will be 600K. And the stormwater, we have a startup cost of zero, and the annual operation cost will be 100K. And I think from your stormwater fee, there may be some supplementation here, but it will cover that maintenance for the MSBU pond and any other infrastructure will repair. And with that, as a summary, we have the startup cost will be 1.92 million, which is the new fund we have to do. And the annual well, maintenance cost is $1.3 million. And that concludes my presentation. Thank you, Dio. Blanche, you're going to come up and do the financial piece? Good afternoon. Um, my name is Blanche Sherman. I'm new finance director for the city of Apopka. Um, I don't know if you can see that, but this, I just want to give you a brief overview of everything that has been shared with you this evening pertaining to um, the annexation. Um, in regards to the fiscal forecast. The total taxable value for this particular area south of Popka is totaling about 225 million, 225.6. Based on that and what the millage rate is for Orange County at the 4.048, that generates about 913,000 in property taxes annually. In regards to that compared to the city of Apopka's millage rate, at 4.18, that's about 944,000.6. So the difference of the 0.1396 that Mr. Hitch shared with you earlier, overall generates about 31,000. So overall, factoring some additional sales tax that may be generated as a result of the population of South Apopka, we're looking at revenue, extra revenue to the city of Apopka of about $1.2 million. The list below identifies the cost that has been shared with you by each director for their respective areas. In regards to the police and fire for operating costs and additional personnel, you're looking at 2,126. Some additional operating costs, about 100,000. Bringing that down, as you can see, that 961,000, that's the deficit at this point, just looking at police and fire operating costs on an annual basis. In addition to that, before we get to the additional operating costs, in order to bring police and fire, they mentioned engines, ambulance, additional vehicles for police, and it may require an additional fire station. That's another $5.1 million. Adding on, the additional operating costs for public service that Mr. Dio just shared with you, we're only looking at 600,000 for streets. The other fees for stormwater sanitation, though that cost will be covered through the fees. 
Parks and Recs, again, everything is negotiable. You're looking at the disc center here, an additional 398,000, and the Wheatley Park, an additional 44,000 to staff and maintain those facilities. So overall, from an operating standpoint, you're looking at a loss of $2 million. That does not include the capital loss, and if we finance that with debt, that we have to pay an annual fee of 632,000. But just focusing on the operating loss of $2 million, how we're gonna recover those funds on an annual basis, it will require, and I don't know how to move this, next slide, going to the millage, I did it. An increase in the millage rate that is currently at the 4.1876 to about 4.5, just to cover that 1.9. And if, that, if we want to include that, the coverage of that debt service, you can increase it to by the, up to 0.55 increase to cover that 2.6 million. This is just an overview, snapshot of the estimated costs associated with annexing South of Popka. Thank you. Thank you, Blanche. Okay, now we're opening up to anybody got any questions? Yeah, come on. Yes, ma'am. So I actually have a few questions. Sure. And uh, the first one is, I hear everything, I hear everything dealing with numbers and money. So what I would like to know is what are the incentives that you, I don't hear anything about incentives to help the residents of South Apopka. I've been here, I was born and raised here. Mm. The community overall are a lot of elderly people, fixed incomes with the cost of living now is a bad time to increase property taxes, to increase anything. The thing with the septic to sewer, I just think the timing <clears> is <throat> off. So I would like to know what do you plan to do with the residents of uh, South Apopka? And what I'm talking about is, what are you, I don't hear anything about helping the youth. I hear about infrastructure and all this other stuff. But what I wanna know, what are you doing for the residents? Not just for the monetary uh, aspect of it, but what are you doing for the residents? And in, in part two, um, how do, I mean, why now? I mean, is it because of the, all of the construction that's going on in the new buildings or, you know, I, I just I don't think now that, is That's the, a pretty easy answer. I think Commissioner Smith ran, you know, for, for, for election, one of his main platforms was looking at the annexation of South Papa. So I, I think he deserves this, this, sure this hearing and, and, um, and discussion. I'd like to yeah. make so, a difference of opinion with that, Mr. Mayor. I think each of us up here had run on a platform to consider South Apopka as, uh, for annexation. Agreed. It's just not Commissioner uh, Smith. Right. And, and can I use a quick analogy? Because you touched sure. on it perfectly when you started your comments. Sure. You know, everybody in here most likely has sat in the finance manager's room of a car dealership, right? And you start talking about your car payment and warranties and the cost of these warranties and you're just like, well, pump the brakes, pun intended. What kind of car is gonna meet my needs? Do I even need a car? And so the point being is that, in all fairness, if I was sitting in my office at the bank, what staff just went through in terms of, you know, infrastructure, what's it gonna cost, what considerations do we have to make in that regard all day long? But in this conversation, it's more about hearing, uh, this shouldn't be a top-down, a city, you know, pushing this initiative onto other people. It should be, there's a true desire from the residents that live in the unincorporated section of Orange County that really see value in coming to our city. And that's what it's always been about for me personally. It's, you know, through certain incidents, I would say, there's a lot of incident-led discussions around annexation. Um, there's also city residents that talk about the value of it. There's county residents that talk about the value of it. So I think instead of like fulfilling a campaign promise to actually do it, it's more about a campaign promise to have this level of conversation. And so mm -hmm. when all the next you know, speakers or followers that come there to the lectern like you are, I want to hear of what do, you, what do you think the value or the driver is of you to contemplate wanting to even explore this? Um, the, the, last, the last meeting that we had in, in November, 
it was brought up that I think we really need to take inventory of what people's opinions are on this matter. Mm -hmm. Because again, there could be a myriad of root causes that lead people to want to annex into the city of Apopka. It may be, hey, I don't feel like I'm represented properly by um, the county representatives that represent me. I'm, I'm just using that as an example, not reality. It could be, hey, I think, um, you know, if Diodat just, who just spoke from public services perspective, if I think that my roads aren't in a condition where I, f and I feel like the city could address it better, or law enforcement, I feel like it would have a better quality of service there. We just really want to understand what is the current landscape of, of residents in unincorporated sections to say, hey, here's the problem statement that we have currently. Because the resolution to that problem statement may not be full annexation. It may not be an investment of a whole bunch of capital expense or operating expense to make it happen. At the end of the day, it's about outcome, and the outcome is better positive life day to day for residents here. Mm -hmm. And so I just want to hear that feedback from, from you all, because I, I come at it from a blank slate. All right. Well, I can only speak for myself, and uh, at this point, totally against it. Uh, like I said, the cost of living is increased, everything. I cannot afford to pay anything for, what is it, 21 point something percent in increase of property taxes, the changeover to uh, septic to sewer. Uh, just, it's just a bad timing to me. Uh, it, it's, and, it's just and, bad timing. And your first question is, the numbers we gave you are, is status quo. Mm -hmm. We're not adding any, any value. If, you, if you're looking for additional value, the status quo other than you get one more garbage pickup a week, but that's all we're giving you additional to what you're, so we had to start, we had to have a start from a, a level playing field, which is you want the staffing like you've got, no better, no worse. I mean, maybe a little better just because, you know, we're a smaller municipality, but that's, that's the point is we're here's, you know, if you want better, then we've got to go above the number that we're talking about. Mm -hmm. Okay, and how far out are you thinking this annexation to me, it seems like it's almost. Mike McK I mean, uh, Mike Rodriguez, the timing would, gosh, it'd probably take us 12 months to, is a, oh, oh, there we go. I mean, I don't. I mean, the timing is all dependent on whether it's going to move forward or not. And I think once, if the policy of the board is to, of the council is to move forward, first would have to actually, if, we'd have to first examine whether we had that threshold of 70% of the property owners within the annexation area are corporations or landlords who don't, who are not electors in the area. And then we'd have to complete that survey if, if it's at that threshold. That's a big if, because we haven't necessarily, I mean, if I just use the round numbers that were presented during Jim's presentation, it's looking like 50, that number is actually at about 50, 4%, 55% are um, not necessarily electors within the area. Therefore, it looks like we're below that 70% threshold. So if that were to move forward, it's going to depend on when the two hearings are going to be set and then slot it into when an election. Usually it's most cost effective to hold an election during a general election so that we can piggyback our costs with the supervisor of elections. So that leaves it open. I mean, there's no set time frame as to when we're going to start. We're kind of work at this is the time frame we're looking at probably a possible election, and we work backwards from there. Okay. And uh, I think that was it. Uh, yeah, I just, I think the timing is off. I can, before you step away from the lectern, yeah. If, if the next speakers that come up, if they can please identify themselves, it oh. makes it easier for us. I'm sorry. Sure. Your name, ma'am? Lori Tarver. Lori. Yes, ma'am. Thank, Thank you so much. I'll move it so you can face them. I, I just have a, a couple of questions, and I, I don't really want to set up a discussion because other people here want to come up to this podium. So my first question is, is the city of Apopka in favor of annexing South Apopka? That's, that's my question to you all as a city, because if you're not in favor of it, we're really here for no reason. You have to be in favor of annexing us. If you're not, why are we here? My that's response my first, is yes. No, no, oh. no, that's my first question because other people want to talk, so I'm not going to hold it. My second question is, I 
heard nothing, zero, of what any of you had to say to support this annexation. It was negative, negative, negative from every one of these people in here. Every single thing was negative, negative, negative. So you don't want us. Just say that. Wait, wait. The other thing I have to say is, we sit in South Apopka, and from my house, I can see all this new growth, the buildings and everything else. But the police department is going to be able to support them. Fire department, financial, all these people over here who can't support Apopka, who supported the city of Apopka. You now say you can't support us but you can support yeah. all this new growth. How are you supporting new growth without your extra 15 police cops and your extra fire department? I'm just wondering, there's too many people in the South Popka who have worked hard for the city. Everybody that goes to work, they come back and spend their money in the city. So all your new growth, is on their backs too. And all these meetings you have are negative, negative, negative. So if you're not here to support us and annex us, stop the fake. That's all I got to say. Well, if I can just briefly comment on that. The, I know the reason I am personally here, I'm not gonna speak for anybody else up here, I want to hear from you. I'm here to support you in whatever capacity you would want it. So I don't have a, a, a preconceived notion, a preconceived agenda. There's benefits and there's costs and benefits. So and if, if there's an, I, I feel from what I've heard, there's an intrinsic value to be part of the city. You, these residents shop in, uh, within the city limits. Mm -hmm. So why not have a voting right in it as well? So I'm here as a blank slate to, to echo Commissioner Becker as well. There's no preconceived notions from me. Uh, and I, I, I support what the residents want. My name is Leroy Bell, and I'm a longtime resident of Apopka in the city and South Apopka. Ms. Beckett, uh, I, I just would like to say, in defense of Commissioner Smith, I think for the last 20 years or so that he has been, in his heart, had the desire to annex South Apopka because he's a product of South Apopka. Now, to get to my little spiel, you know, with all the numbers and stuff, you know, I, 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 wouldn't, I didn't even get a B in PE, so we ain't gonna worry about the, the numbers. When we start talking about parks and recreation, if annexation happened, why are we talking about Wheatley? Why are we talking about John Bridges? If we become citizen of the city, wouldn't we be able to share into the amenities out on the other side, up around uh, Jason Dwelling? We'll be a part of the city, correct? Now, as far as maintenance, uh, the maintenance man right here, we're talking about sidewalks. We ain't got to dig up no sidewalks. We already got sidewalks. You got down here in the dump, that the city making money on the dump. Everybody talking about what money coming in. What, how much, didn't nobody say how much money they was making on the dump. If these 2,200 people not shop in the economy in, South, in, in uh, the city of Apopka, what would that look like for the economy of Apopka? When I ran for city council of the city, mayor, all you guys saying, Oh, how can you change South Apopka? What, what can you do any different from somebody that never did it before? It's simple. Do in South Apopka what you're doing in North Apopka. Yeah. It's just that simple. Now, I, wanna, I just want to share this, and I'll, I'll move out the way. We got a pretty good crowd around here tonight, and this crowd should be fuller than this. But Mary, you can seem to find a way. You always can find a way to disenfranchise folks. If you look down on 13th Street, you see it say on, on the sign down there, 
commute, uh, well, community meet. You got it on a Popka web page, annexation meeting on the 24th. How many people in South of Popka go on the website in Apopka? None. But you can reach these people down here. Why? When you send them your water bill, you could have put it in there. You could have put a notice in there. But the people that you wanted against it, you went round and marched and round them up. That's the reason I round up the people that wanted it. And I'll leave you with this. If you don't want the people, I live, I live up around Clear Lake, up there now. We just put, they just put in 48 houses on Binion. Right on Luss, I believe they putting in 60 or so. Then you go, go on up around Jason Dwelling. I think it's a total of 3,000. I just need someone to tell me from your staff how many presentations did y'all give them that were going to cost them? How many police departments? How many fire departments? Now, for the, for the police department, and I'll leave it with this. Since he need to, I think it was 27 20. police that they need to add here, 14. Well, I think we need to add at least three more to the city of Apopka Police Department, because I believe in the last two months we had two police departments that were arrested for DUI. So clean, sweep around your own front door before you sweep around these people down here. You know, all I've heard from y'all is negativity when it comes to South Apopka. Do y'all understand that South Apopka spending money in your town? If it wasn't from the people from South Apopka, it wouldn't be no Popka. It wouldn't be as it is now. The toil and labor that we did to make this a great place to live. But I think this is more political than anything. You know why? Because a lot of y'all won't have your jobs. You think about the votes. And I think that's one of your main reasons. Yeah. <laughs> if all these people here are going to vote, who to say they vote for you? That's what you're scared of. Because every report that these panels done brought was in the deficit. But you don't say that, and it's a proven fact. How many people you think done came that y'all done built houses for? Apartments. How many people you think done came to a park? 10? 12,000? Can anyone of y'all answer that? The growth within the last 10 years in a park? No, you don't care about that. You didn't care about your policemen, your firemen. You didn't come up beyond a and raise that question. But every time it comes to annexation us, y'all have a problem. Like, you want to tell us what we don't want because we are not here. The reason we are not here, because you don't invite us. <clears throat> if you do, you pick up a weird time. Yeah. <laughs> How do y'all expect people to come here represent themselves at 4 o'clock. People's got to go to work, feed the families. If you want to be truthful about it, why won't this meeting done at 6? You don't want our vote. You don't want it. You use all the excuses. All of them use excuses compared to all what you done did for others. 
Have y'all ever thought you, you build the north, you build the east, and you build the west? How can you overskip the south? Tell me, how can you build all around us and tell us we don't belong? Why do y'all tell us that we don't belong and we made a pop? You see all them peoples out there? Their people, mm -hmm. my people, we build the pop. Not all them transit that you bring in here, but you provide for them, and you overlook us. We're tired of being overlooked. We want y'all to do something. Don't let this become political. Yeah. And, and I'll be first to say, if I've come across as negative on this topic, that is certainly not my intent, and that's certainly not been my behavior on this matter for the past few years. Um, you know, when you look, I'm mean, the way that we started this presentation off, you, we talked about uh, creating enclaves. If, punch it up. Go to google.com slash maps and just punch in Apopka. Where's the enclave? It's south Apopka. We're developing all around Apopka, and we, we can't continue to have this conversation of we're going to continue down that path because it's not. I, I don't believe that's the right path long term. In, in terms of population growth, I mean, we've grown double since the past 20 years. Our population has doubled You're right. in the, the past 20 years. Um, and, and if my analogy before didn't come across as right, I apologize. But the point being, at the last meeting, we shouldn't be talking dollars and cents right now. Shouldn't matter what the cost is at this point of the conversation. This point of the conversation should all be, be all about what is going to be an outcome, a positive outcome for the people impacted on this piece of business that we're talking about. I come, if I've come across as negative, I apologize, but I have a very open mind when it comes to talking about the situation. And that's, and to Commissioner Zenso's point, you know, it's, we just need to hear what, what, is, what are people really seeking through if we consider annexation? Because that's it's something I will fully get behind as long as I feel that the people that live here that will be impacted by the decisions that we make, it positively impacts you. I'm gonna ask you a question. Sure. Have y'all ever asked? I'm sorry. You ever asked them? You ever asked these people? Have y'all really asked these people in South Apopka what do they want? You're speaking for them. That's them out there. You are not spoken to them. And that's what I wanna do. This, this type of forum, Again, with how we efficient, because we, in government, we want to be as transparent and open as possible. I'm speaking for myself here. And so, yeah, we've had these conversations individually, but individual conversations can get misconstrued. They can be deter deciphered in different ways. This opportunity here is to allow everybody to come here in a public forum and say, this is what I want. And for us to be able to document that publicly just make sure that everybody's aligned and transparent, and that's what I'm after. It's, and this, these types of conversations is, have not happened in the past, and, and, and it's good that we're having these types of open dialogues, because it just hasn't happened before. You're still forgetting the point. You never asked them. How can they? You never asked them. Now one of them could say that they sent no flowers to none of their houses and ask them do they want to be annexed. You didn't do that. So how do you know what they want? You're assuming. That's all you're doing. You can't speak for these people. You can't speak for them. That's no. what you're trying to say. No, I, I, I'm, not, I'm not saying that. I, I don't assume to speak for anybody in this room. Well, I, I, this is a forum by which to say, this is what my feeling is on this particular but topic. You, you gauge in a forum on your, on your behalf where you set the guidelines but you don't know what the public want. You don't know what the, you do not know what these people want. I agree, I agree, I agree. Until you ask. And saying is one thing, doing is another. Yes, sir. And why don't y'all sometimes ask these people what they want? Why don't you ask us? Just ask us. You We're have not. given us a challenge to do that. Yeah, um, over the us. years, um, 
I can tell you that I've spoken to uh, many of the residents that do live in South Apopka, and the one thing that they, I constantly hear is, well, when is it going to happen? And so you have challenged us, and you are correct about the time. Um, four o'clock is inconvenient because, um, you know, in South Apopka, there are a lot of working families, and they don't get home till six. So we can always have another time that we could do this, and we're going to continue to do this until we get it right. You have challenged us tonight, and I'll tell you what, we are going to go out there. I am going to go out there and start asking, and start asking some of the residents, what do you want? What is it that's going to make you feel like you are part of the city of Apopka? Mm -hmm. And one of the things that I have said was, during my elections, it was, I was always challenged about South Apopka. But then once the election was over, as commissioners, we're not the strong commissioners in the city of Apopka. It is the mayor who sets the tone. It is the mayor who sets the agenda for the city of Apopka. And it is the commissioners who also challenge the mayor to say, these workshops were because of us, because we felt it was important to have this workshop, to at least open it up for discussion, to give the residents of South Apopka an opportunity to express what they wanted. And that's why we're here. And again, as you heard from the very beginning, every presentation that they made, I asked, when do we ask the questions? Um, this was just a whole bunch of numbers and what it was gonna cost. And you're right. You have challenged us in the idea that as we are growing the rest of Apopka, we seem to be meeting the demands and being able to provide that level of service. So why is it such a difficult decision for the south of Apopka? So you have challenged us tonight to go out and ask, and that's what we should be doing. Okay, thank you. Thank you, sir. Yeah. Yeah, my neck you would now. I'm Clinton Stanley. I'm pretty much coach. I am South of Parker. And when I say that, I am product of every elderly in here. I'm product of them. I'm that kid that was a part of the problem in South of Parker. And I've been around 41 years. And when I tell you it hasn't changed, and who, put, who was in charge of putting this meeting together here? Who was in charge of putting this meeting together here? Me. You. So why didn't you reach out to Christine Moore and Jerry Demons? Because the county officials should have been sitting right up here with you because they need to be on the hot seat as well. It's not on you. It's on Christine Moore and Jerry Demons them to do what they need to do in South Apopka also because the county hasn't been doing what they're supposed to do. So I'm not going to put that on you. I'm Christine Moore, you're welcome to come up here. Because you need to, you people, they need to see who you are because they don't know who you are. Because this is the only time you come to South of Popka. Um, so, I mean, I'm just being totally honest. The infrastructure is not where it's supposed to be. We all know that. This annexation is just a tax and dollar land grab. We know that. So let's get to the point of saying the mayor, he don't want us to be a part of the city because... It's been 40 years, 30, 50 years since the Didel and all those different annexations. Miss Francine Borgen has all the paperwork. And it's been that long. That smile, that, that, that don't fool nobody no more because we're sick and tired of just seeing that smile. We want to see some results. People doing what they're elected to do. Simple as that. And I don't, I'm not here to make no friends because I'm my only friend. But Christine Moore, you need to hold yourself accountable you and your board of commissioners, and Jerry Demon, because I don't see him in South of Park unless he's throwing candy at our kids. Throw us, a, th oh, throw us a recreation and learning facility. Give us more than lights and a, cut a couple of trees. Give us what we desire. And these people right here, I am product of them. And it's a lot of people that don't want to talk. They're not going to say anything. But I'm going to speak for them. We're sick and tired of it. And sick and tired of being sick and tired of. This here... Let's wipe this out because they don't want to be a part of the city. Am I right? Ask them, do y'all want to be a part of the city? They don't want to be a part of the city. Exactly. So, huh? 
They don't want us there. They treat us like a they treat us like an unwanted baby. So that's how I feel. You know, my I've been feeling this way for years now. And Mel, you know, just stay up there, control the city. Do right by the people that's in the city because as of what I'm looking at, you're not doing right by the people that's already in the city. How you in hell you expect for me to believe you're gonna do right by us? <laughs> Albert McKimmy, 3603 Golden Gem Road, Apopka. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, I truly sympathize with your position tonight. However, when we meet here, the facts that we are given are important. Numbers do matter. If we are not based our infrastructure on correct numbers, we're going to have a problem. So, Chief McKinley, I would like to thank you for your concise uh, interpretation numbers tonight. It would appear that you managed to give me numbers that I've been searching for that the city administration have failed to give me for weeks. So let me just have a look at those numbers, Chief. You presented this report, I believe, in November, which probably means that you produced it sometime in September or October. So these numbers are already out of date. These numbers, 27,000 that Chief McKinley advises us the city will have over the next 10 years, are already out of date. In the last two months on Golden Gemma Road alone, I have seen 3,000 homes passed for, a, for a, a, a development at the end of Golden Gem Road, and directly across the road from Golden Gem Road, I see another 2,000 houses or uh, family accommodation have just been put through. So we're speaking about another 5,000 properties. 3,000 and 2,000 is 5,000, times three is 15,000. Add that to the 27,000 that the chief has also said, means your numbers are nothing like factual. How can you base infrastructure on numbers that you can't, you can't give me? Mr. Hitt has promised to uh, supply numbers at the year end because the numbers that he gave, he said the city couldn't provide, that they were actually factual, yet... Chief McKinley tonight openly states 27,000. How is it he can give us numbers that the city can't seem to give us? Neither does anyone in the city decide to, to accept my invitation to discuss the numbers that they feel comfortable with, with for, for future development. I really sympathize with these people, but I sometimes wonder if you're better off where you are than where he is. Thank you. Hi, my name is Lorena Johnson. I live um, just literally down the street. I'm a little nervous, but I felt like I needed to come to say something. I moved here to the city of Apopka in 2016, so I'm not born here, raised here. I moved here from a different state. But we moved here to the city of Apopka believing that we were giving our kids a better life here in the city. Now, since we've been here in 2016, there has been the city of Claremont, the city of Winter Garden, the city of Ocoee, that has literally grown with businesses. I'm not sure about this South Apopka annexation. I, I've tried to research and research, and a lot of the verbiage literally goes over my head because I don't understand the numbers. Nothing really makes sense, but I'm trying to understand how everything is being built in North Apopka, but South Apopka is being neglected. We're building homes, 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 homes in South Apopka, but there is no retail. We're going to the city of Ocoee to shop because I'm not going all the way up to North Apopka to shop. So my question is to this group here, and I know I've seen Mr. Becker speak. I actually voted for him because I wanted change. I wanted change here in the city of Apopka. We need new and young, I'm sorry. The whole thing is with City of Winter Garden, City of Ocoee, City of Claremont, everywhere else is growing but South Apopka. And I wanna know why. I'm taking my son up to school all the way up to North Apopka at Wolf Lake, and there was a new middle school built right next to Wolf Lake. Does that make sense? I've been on the phone with the area superintendent. I've talked to her assistant, because it doesn't make sense how the people of South Apopka literally has to drive their kids all the way up to North Apopka just to go to school. 
just today, I had to run over here because I didn't even know there was a meeting. I saw it on Instagram working, went, ran and picked up my daughter and ran over here because this, I feel like this is my only time to say anything. And then all I hear is cost, 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 cost. Are my property taxes going up? I want to know. Those are the things that we need, that we have concerns for. I want more retail here in South Apopka. I don't want to have to drive to Ocoee to go to the grocery store. I don't want to have to go all the way up to Wakaiva to go to the grocery store. Why, why don't we have retail stores here in South Apopka? We have one gas station on Ocoee Apopka Road. That's the issue I have, and that's why I came here today. <clears throat> Well, and to, to address your concerns, Ms. Johnson, I mean, not, not to get into this contentious debate up here, but I mean, this last meeting, we just passed the Economic Development Department and Roll, and, that's, and that was a 3-2 vote, and it just shows you the, the temperature of what this council is right now. Um, I'm all about progress, pro-growth in terms of business development, because it just creates opportunities within our city, and your concerns are, are very valid, in my opinion. Um, now, the property tax issue, again, the mayor's gonna try and have you believe that you have to automatically raise property taxes in order for this to be a reality. And I, I, I firmly disagree with that sentiment on the surface of things because, and the, my reason being is, like the attorney said, this isn't gonna be an overnight change if this were to occur. This would occur over a two to three, maybe even four year period of time, which allows us plenty of opportunity for us to properly budget, account for, and I mean, that's assuming that our, our property tax revenue stream stays static over that period of time, which we all know that it's not. With the growth that we've seen within Apopka, that property tax base is gonna increase, um, and that's gonna afford us more opportunity and resources to be able to do the things that like, people like yourself wanna get done in the city, and I'm, I'm a fan of it as well. My other thing is how is our property tax not gonna go up when the finance director just stated in her presentation, I didn't get to hear everybody else because well, I got here like, because yeah, I, the reason, and I'll let staff speak for themselves, but the reason is because they're, they're making assumptions based off of our current state. You know, what does our revenue and our expense look like today? Versus in reality, you should project out what that's gonna look like three years from now when this actually, make, when this actually happens and you know, model out what it's gonna cost then, what our revenue would look like at that point in time, because we're doing an apples to oranges mix here. We, we, sh we should really be, in, and truthfulness to the people that are here right now, we should be talking apples to apples. My, my name is Mistress Yvonne Joseph Stolada. I'm on 2588 Modern Road. I do not, do not want to annex with a popcorn. Blue shirt, you know nothing. All you do, you never come to the post. You don't know nothing. I know you at First Methodist Church, you haven't been back there. Stop, get up and talk. Sit down and let me talk. I've been there for 19, 45 years when I move. I fight and got a second house. I do what I want. The news media cannot come up there. That's P-R-I-V-E-T, property. You must sit down, because you don't do nothing. You don't come to the WF Post. You don't know nothing. N-O-T-H-I-N-G. Sit down. Get off. Thank you. What is it? Christi Co Commissioner Moore, do you want to sure. come forward? Yeah. It's okay. We had a board meeting today. I had to leave. Uh, Commissioner Christy Moore and I know Mayor Demings probably would have been here. They're still in a meeting, so I had to leave early to be here today. I wanted to tell you we do have quite a bit of staff in the room. Uh, Jason Reynolds, head of our Neighborhood Services Department, our Community Action Board. Can you wave so everyone can see the Orange County staff in the room? They're most. Oh, you guys got to be a little braver than that. <laughs> anyway, um, thank you for holding this meeting. I, I know we're committed. Uh, if this process is moving forward or if you so desire to have some uh, meetings held from the county's perspective as well with Mayor Demings here with staff to address not only if you have concerns what this process would look like 
um, from our perspective. And so it's, it's, it's a lengthy process. There are many steps involved, and so we will be here as well to have more opportunities for the folks to speak to us. Um, from my perspective, a as your commissioner, I don't want to see you all go. It's been my honor and privilege to serve you, and I know Mayor Demings uh, feels the same way. But we want to hear from you. If there are concerns, we want to hear about that. I think you should explore being in the city versus the county, and I know it's a very heartfelt it, it, it has a lot of pain. There's a lot of history in this decision, but we're here. We're here to be part of the process and share everything that we have with you and let you make a good decision. And thank you, Mayor, for inviting me to the podium. Thanks, Commissioner. Okay. Anybody else? Any other questions? Okay. Good evening, everyone. Uh, my name is Sylvester Smith. Um, I've been here since 1965. This thing that we're talking about been here since 1965 and before me, me's bottom way back when. No, y'all don't know anything about that. Um, all the things that they brought up and talked about, especially the parks and rec thing, um, we already know that in Apopka itself, the city, that once you cross that railroad track, you might as well say South Apopka because we get the same thing right there, pretty much so, the neglection, okay? Y'all just put a new building up there at Bakersfield in the parking lot, the cars are sticking out in the road. You put asphalt instead of cement. You don't find that in North Apopka. When they said, whatever you do in North Apopka, do it over here on this side too. And we're not even talking about just South Apopka, we're just talking about across the track. Okay, so I know if we are treated like we are up there, I just know what's gonna happen over here. You know? And just like you said, it's, I'm going to tell you right now, it's political and it's a land grab, point blank. We all know this. So y'all can play whatever role you want to play or whatever. Even I've seen somebody right before the election bring this up. I'm like, okay, this whole thing is political. We get the back end of everything. You can look from 6th Street to 10th Street. That part of Apopka don't get treated like North Apopka. And guess what? I got properties in North Apopka. I got properties over here on this side. Everything from the water to the calls to the electric company to everything, we're at the back end or at the bottom, period. I go off for 22 years in the military. I come back. I see the Popka police on the east side. I see the Popka police on the north side. I see the Popka police on the west side. But guess what? There's still no police over here. And these buildings and Structures are going up left and right, and we keep talking about numbers, okay? I understand we have to have those numbers, but I guarantee you, if someone wants something on that north side, the numbers go out the door, and it gets done. You got that huge facility up there on the other side of town, and then you talk about over here, you bring up what's already here at Wheatley Field at the elementary school, and then you bring up 6th Street. And I say 6th Street and Bakerfield. I know y'all don't know what I'm talking about, but that's another thing. There's a field you got up there that's named after somebody that was a commissioner here a long time ago. But yet, the residents here, and if y'all talk to them, you would know who that field should be named after. Anybody? Who? Okay, thank you very much. So, when y'all transplants come in here and you get these positions or whatever, and you don't talk to the people, or you don't know who, who is or what's happening here or what we've been through, like I said, this has been going on for years and years and years. And if you guys don't gain that trust for anybody on this side to make them think that, okay, it's not a land grab. We want to really help you people. Nothing's going to change. We're going to sit here. We're going to have these meetings. It's going to be the same old crap. Same thing just like in South Park. When somebody gets shot and killed, oh, there's a meeting. There's a police. There's Orange County, there's Apopka, have a meeting. Two more months later, same thing happened again. Meeting, same thing over and over and over. And nothing gets done and nothing changes. They have, they have events up on 6th Street. I keep calling it 6th Street, it's M.A. Board Street. But the cops don't even want to come do the off-duty stuff up there. We can't even get that. You know. So I can sit here and I can go on and on and on and 
one of these days, and you guys been up here, I've seen all your faces when we opened up the, the Dean facility, okay? Do y'all see the cars you pet, you, in the parking spaces? They're hanging out the road. You will never see that up in North Popka. Nowhere even close. The parking lot is asphalt. Potholes are going to come. You'll never see that in North Popka. Everything from the, the and I know uh, Mr. Bell talked about the sidewalks and stuff. Yeah, we got sidewalks on the north side of some streets, but we don't have sidewalks on the south side of those streets. Okay? Right now, we've talked about speed bumps for the longest. Okay, you put some on Hawthorne, you put them on one block on 6th Street, then you got another block here on 6th Street that, okay, We'll, we'll let y'all guess about it or, or whatever. I, I don't know how it goes or what you guys are doing with that or whatever. You know, so when you make calls up there to people and you don't get re return calls, it gets frustrating. And year after year after year, because I have parents and I have a lot of family live over here. Matter of fact, my grandfather is John Henry Bridges. Okay, so when these people are talking to you guys, why are we here right now for this at this time? And that's, that's, that, those are the questions that need to be answered and talk to those people and assure them that, okay, we're not going to knock down your little homes on your little lots that we've zoned off up on this side of town. So there are, there are a ton of things that you guys have inherited. I'll put it like that. Some of you guys have been here for a long time and know this. You know? So we, we've come a long way. And I'll tell you, I went to Dream Lake Elementary School, I went to Parker Junior High School, I went to Parker High School. And I will tell you, I've been chased from Junior High School up 441, I mean up Park Avenue, back up to 441, called nigger, four by fours, shotguns in the trucks, bats and all those things. A lot of us have been through that, okay? So when you talk to us or come to us with something that's superficial, that's what it seems like to us. So we've dealt with a lot over here. And for you guys to come over here and say, okay, guess what? Just like today, Stanley brought it up. Okay, why, I mean, uh, Mr. Uh, Beckett, why we got to meet at 4 o'clock? Please, somebody tell me 4 o'clock. 4 o'clock. Okay, where, what, are, what are people doing at 4 o'clock? I'm not going to go over it again. But again, like I said, and this Parks and Rec thing, though, Popka High School literally has lived off of our kids on this side. But yet, you want to put pond, all that stuff up on pond can, but yet you want to use the facilities that are already here. And we get the smallest of the small, the small Dean building. And this is Orange County, not a pop but that little thing on 18th Street, the building is so small, it's like, okay, what do we do here? Are, are we going to go and say, um, well, these people pay the least amount of taxes, so they'll get the least amount of services or whatever. And that's what you see. That's exactly what you see. Now, I live up on Osla Road. I have a big house on three acres. Guess what? If I need something, it's done. I got good water. Electricity go out, they're there. My mother lives right there on M.A. Board Street. We literally live on the whole street from day one. If something goes out, <laughs> guess what? It ain't happening at all. So I see the differences between living up there and living over here. And that, again, that's still in the city. That's not even down here in South Apopka. You know, my, grand, my grandfather fought for these things way back in the 70s. And here we are still discussing the same thing, ironically, in a facility named after him. And it's sad. So I, I, I wish you guys would take off your political hats and put on a Apopka hat because we, they contribute over here to, that, to the city, okay? So you have to understand, we're not just, okay, deadbeat people over here on this side of town. Forget about them. We're going to make sure we take care of these people over here. And that's what it looks like, and that's what it's looked like for years, and that's actually how it's been. So all the carrots you guys dangle out in front of everybody, it, it, ain't, it ain't working. They know better. They know better. We're smarter than you think we are. Thank you. Good afternoon. My name is Cornelia Winchester. Um, I've been in Apopka since 1970, which I was born there. 
parents have a house here on 13th Street. They just deceased. Um, there's been a lot of issues. I know a lot of people have already spoken about the things that we are going through. I'm just going to leave you guys with this. Whether you know it or not, when you start building a house, you start from the foundation, correct? South Apopka is the foundation of Apopka, whether you know it or not. And if, you, and if the foundation is not steady, the outside areas are not going to be steady. So you neglecting the foundation is going to really tear down the outside because you're not taking care of the foundation, which is here in Apopka, South Apopka. People see it. Like right now, around these areas, you guys are building. Right here on 13th Street, we're asking for speed bumps. I can't even walk outside the yard without almost getting hit because you got so many cars, so much access on 13th Street, and nobody's doing anything about it. The taxes. You got elderly people here. What are you going to do? Nobody has done anything for South Apopka, especially for the elderly. You haven't placed any money here. So guess what? Whatever you don't feed will die. We're dying here. We see all the beautifications around everywhere else. Come on, people. We see the money. We see the money all over the world has been passed for people like us. But you guys are pocketing your money. Your, your pockets are being fat and leaving everybody else out here to scuff and survive. We see the generations changing over now. Our elderly are passing on. It is us now. So guess what? You're going to hear from us. It's not going to be brushed under the rug anymore because guess what? We make money just like you make money. We spend money just like you spend money. But we spend the most money in the city of Apopka, South Apopka. And if it wasn't for South Apopka, it wouldn't be Apopka. Any, anybody else? <laughs> you are so beautiful to me. You are so beautiful to me. It's beautiful to see this crowd out. Because the mayor, I'm going to keep it 100. The mayor said, don't nobody care. Take a good look, man. I ain't seen but one or two people. This is down at the city council meeting, which you all need to show up like you are now. Last year, I missed two city council meetings because I'm here to represent my people. The mayor asked, he said, it's no, nobody but these troublemakers from North Apopka. Well, mayor, in, in our culture, it tells us, once God bless you, to get up, leave the neighborhood, come back. And Mary, that's what I'm doing every day. I'm coming back. Most of you don't see that behind the scene. But there's a few of us fighting. Now, in order for a permanent change to, to take place, you've got to keep doing what you're doing right now, showing up and show out. You've got to get up, and you've got to come out, and you've got to show up and show out. Now, Commissioner, Commissioner Christine Moore, if it was election time, you would have your seat up there. That's keeping it real and being respectful. So if you are tired of being treated like a wet food step, now is the time to dry off and rise up and say no more. Now, as Nelson Mandela used to quote it, poverty is man-made. How does a South Apopka get in this condition? How did everything else around of it progress? And South Apopka say the same. Go back and read your history. Go back and read your history. It's designated from the city. The blacks would be over here and the whites would be over there. And everything that was black, you didn't get anything. You wouldn't care about, you wouldn't thought about. That's why it's like that. And now you come and have the nerve to ask the people, what do you want? After they don't died and sacrificed for years. I was at a minister alliance meeting when I first got here. 
I retired out of the Navy in 2003. And God bless his soul now, he's going on to heaven. And I think it was Pastor Warren. I said, how can we leave? How can we let our community stay in this poverty stricken for decade after decade? My sisters and brothers, we have to be that change that we're talking about. Not them. We have to be that change that we're talking about. And when I say keep it real, in our country today, we scared to say the, race, the, the words racism. We're scared to talk about it. But there's so much racism and hate that's going on in our country today, it's sad. And they're bold about it. Now you can either lay down and take it, or you can rise up. Because we are all the kings. We are all the queens. God didn't make any of us inferior. They beat you if you tried to pick up a book. And now they question why our kids don't want to go to school. Your brain was supposed to be so small you couldn't learn anything. We got the best doctors, lawyers, businessmen, wherever you let us. Whenever you give us the resources to compete, we either set the bar or we raise the bar. Our black females are the most educated in this country, bar none. And I don't say that bragging or boasting. I say this, we are all people. We are all are Americans. When we come together as one America, we make America great for everybody. So I say to you, time out for them. What are you going to do? Like Joe Madden said, what are you going to do about it? Is this going to be your last meeting when you go home? And everybody pat them and well, I sure told him. And nothing get accomplished. It's time for us to love each other, black and white. It's time for us to love each other and come together. There's no reason South Apopka should be in the condition that it is now. Amen. No reason. And for the board, yeah, you may have inherited this. And if I'm going to keep it real, some of you was part of South, of South of Parker being the way it is. Because if you know better, you should do better. And when it's wrong, you should say it's wrong. When you know better, you should do better. When it's wrong, you should say it's wrong. So I say to you today, Come out. Get involved. See what's going on. The last mayor, uh, mayor election, to my knowledge, and it's throwing some figures, there was 35,000 registered voters in the city of Apopka. 35,000. 8,000 votes total casted. The mayor won with, I think, a little bit of, maybe a little bit over four and Commissioner Becker had somewhere in the high, th high threes. So if you look at 35,000 registered, 35, registered voters, and our mayor was selected with less than 4,000 4, votes, already at 4,000 votes, what do that say about us as a people? And then we cry about what's wrong, why they doing this to us, simply because we won't get out and vote. We won't be a part of the process. This is your money that they're spending. And they tell you what they're going to do with it. Instead of you telling them what they're going to do with it. So I say to everybody here, because we all call on God Almighty. So in our hearts, let's do what's right. Commissioner Smith, you say you didn't care how much money it took. It should be annexed in. If it took 10 million, it should be annexed in. And I'm speaking to all of you right now. You have the opportunity to correct a wrong that was done in our society when it comes to South Apopka. If you can't do the research, I'll bring the research to you. And I'll give it to you in a PowerPoint presentation just like they gave. And I'll give you the reasons for annexing South Apopka, why it should be annexing. But here today, here today, you see what the people see. 
And Commissioner Becker, I know your heart. And I, I voted for you, and I think you're a good man. But see, when the people say, have you asked us how we feel? Like the other young lady said, if you run in your household, you should know how your kids feel. You guys represent us. We shouldn't have to come to you and say, hey, I need a new pair of shoes. We shouldn't have to come to you and say, I'm hungry. You get out in the community, you see what needs to be done. You get back together, you make those changes. That's what serving the people is all about. Not serving yourself, serving the people. So I say today, let's give a love a chance. Let's love our neighbors. Let's love each other. And when we fall in love, hate has no room. Think about something you love. Think about something you love, not something you, think about something you in love with. Not you love, because if you love something, you still do wrong. But if you in love with something or somebody and somebody speak against it or her and somebody try to hurt them, you'll go to hell and high water to protect them. So white America, black America, let's fall in love with each other. And let's treat each other the way God wanted all of us to live and, 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 and be treated. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. All right. We're going to we're gonna go ahead and, before we close the public hearing, we'll go ahead and just start down with Commissioner Nesta. And, yeah, we got a couple more. Oh, do we? Oh, okay. Yeah. All right. Yes. Thank you, uh, councilmen and women and the mayor. Uh, this is like deja vu. 37 years ago, this, was, this is an annexation study that was done by the city of Apopka, and I be, I'll try to be as brief as I can here. In 1984, the city of Orlando was wanting to consolidate the entire Orange County. Mayor John Land, the late Mayor John Land, and in his infinite wisdom came and said he didn't want the city of Apopka to lose its identity in a metropolitan area. So therefore, a study was done. 37 years ago, a study was done. There were two committees, citizens from the city limits of Apopka and citizens from Orange County. There were a series of meetings held before the vote was put to a referendum. This proposal included the entire Orange County unincorporated Apopka, okay? The entire, which so happened to include the carved out area now that we are referring to as South Apopka. So if you look at the map in 1984, and it's in here, of the entire region, what we call now South Apopka was in that unit. So it was the city of Apopka who came, but it was on a larger scale. It was just not this carved out section of which is mostly known as Oak Lawn Subdivision. For those of you who do not know what Oak Lawn Subdivision is, it was a uh, property that was purchased by Mr. L.T. Hunt, a real estate mogul in his day, who provided land and sold land to us poor people here in what is called South of Popka. Mr. Hunt walked every inch of what you see in this region off by foot, spitting out his water tobacco or dropping his cigarette duck to mark the property lines. That's why a lot of people scream now, oh, you're on my property, you're on my, oh, blame Mr. Hunt. 
but he gave black people of this community an opportunity to own land, as well as another real estate mogul whose family is still prominent today in downtown Orlando is the Cumbies. Some of you don't know the Cumbies, but Mr. Cumby owned quite a bit of real estate here in Apopka at the time. Mr. Cumby was murdered here in Apopka. Research. Mr. Cumby owned the land where we know once known as Hawthorne Village. But he was murdered in the 70s. So as we hear today, we speak of annexation, and we're debating, we got the figures of what is proposed. But in reality, <laughs> it's not going to happen very soon. Because there's no infrastructure. And who's going to pick up that tab? My mother and family, they lived, they came here in the early 40s. And my granddaddy bought property from Mr. Hunt in 1949. That was a few months before he was almost beaten nearly to death and he left. Mr. Hunt D specified that his property should not be sold to any other race but of the Ethiopian race from 15 years of the purchase of that land. So my grandfather had to break that deed and, uh, because he couldn't come back here to live because he was beaten by the Ku Klux Klan in 1949. I have the FBI report. But anyway, as we, as citizens of this neighborhood, I'm, I, I was born a couple of blocks up in Dolly Quarters because we had nothing but quarters because we were all family, all our family members came here, descendants came here as workers, they were workers. So I feel overwhelmed now. I feel that I'm being rooted out. Every day I get called, do you want to sell your land? Do you want to sell your house? Now I'm dealing with that we have homes in this community that's being built and charging a quarter million dollars. Something that we never heard in here because most of the housing that you see in this area the old housing was moved here by the Starberts family, who was the founding family, early family of uh, Apopka, who brought utilities to the area. The Starbirds property is just a few blocks up where the, grave, the cemetery is. But the Starbirds moved a lot of the structures that you see in this area. And when people wanted to buy a house, they would go either to Holy Park, to the Turpentine Mill, they buy the houses that had been a left behind by those people, plus Naval Air Stations. And they would come back and uh, they'd tell Mr. Hunt, I, I found a house over there, uh, it, it, you know, a lot of army barracks, uh, military housing, and this, Mr. Hunt, how many feet is it? Well, Mr. Hunt, it's about 50 feet. Well, that's when Mr. Hunt walked off that 50 feet of land. So when you ride around in this community and you see where the streets in that should begin. Think about Mr. Hunt, and he amassed his wealth. He even donated the land where Phyllis Wheatley is. So he's some kind of man. I've been trying to track down his family members forever because he gave us that opportunity to own land. So it's up to you. It's, the future's in your hands. It's in our hands. So we have to decide. And in 1984, what happened? This referendum was defeated by the people in the county. And you're not talking about just the people here in this community voting. You're talking about everybody in Orange County. OK? Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. All right. Everybody's had their chance. We'll close, wrap it up here. And Commissioner Nesta, you want to kind of lead us out in any final thoughts you'd like to? Sure. No, I just first off want to say thank you for everybody being here. Everybody speaking, uh, it, it's highly appreciated. Um, the biggest thing I hear is basically politicians, do what you said you were going to do. Just show up. Do better. And I think that's where we start. Uh, we can go along with annexation, but unless we're doing what's right now with what we already have, it doesn't make sense. So my promise moving forward from here, and I've, I've taken a substantial amount of notes, it, just do better. Show up in the community more. Uh, help out however I can listen more than speak. Uh, I think that's key, and, and I think moving forward, that's what we do. And if annexation is 
what the community wants to do moving forward as I'm listening, then that's what we'll do. Uh, again, I think it's about just being more impactful as a politician, as leaders in the community, uh, is what I'm hearing. So moving forward, I promise you, I will definitely, you'll be seeing me a lot more. <laughs> and I, and I want to be a part of uh, whatever you guys need to help do better. Thank you. Mr. Smith. Well, I too want to say thanks for all of you for attending. And just as it was referenced earlier when I was asked um, probably five years ago uh, if it cost $10 million to annex South Apopka, did I think it was still something to be done? And I said yes then, and I still say yes today because I don't think that you can put a price on human life. In 1937, when the ordinance was passed that blacks could not live north of the railroad tracks and whites couldn't live south of the railroad tracks, it was wrong then, and it's still wrong today. So in 1968, they passed a referendum to repeal that ordinance, but it was only on paper. So we have to understand how did this area get to the where it is today. And it was because the individuals that lived in this area were agricultural workers. They worked in the greenhouses, they worked in the nurseries, and that's how Apopka maintained its name as the foliage capital of the world, off of the individuals that lived in this area of Apopka. They picked oranges, they went to the muck, pulled corn, cut cabbage, picked cucumbers. And in those days, if you were an agricultural worker, you didn't have to pay Social Security, you didn't have to pay income tax. So as a result, now that we know that your Social Security is based on your work history, well, I was one of those that picked oranges. I was one of those that worked in the greenhouse and the nursery and did not pay Social Security back in those days. So when it came time for me to draw Social Security, that part of my work history did not exist. So when we hear our seniors talk about they have to decide whether they're going to pay rent or buy medicine, it's because of the conditions that we were put in back in those days. I grew up two blocks from here on 15th Street. And when I was living on 15th Street, we didn't even have indoor toilet. We had an outhouse. When we eventually did get an indoor toilet with a septic tank, my job during the summer was to empty the septic tank with a five-gallon bucket. It was a rough time, but we learned how to deal with it. But now here we are in 2022, 2023, and it's time for a change. And annexation is the way to make that happen. As a teacher, when I gave students an assignment, they went home and they did the research and they found the answers and then they came back with answers to the assignment. It appears that what we have done today is backwards. We already have the answers before we were given the assignment. And so as I said before, our departments, they've done their homework, they come up with the numbers, now we need to put a plan in place as to how we're going to make that happen. I understand that we can't do it today, but I firmly believe that we need to put a strategic plan in place that within the next five years that this annexation takes place, and we need to start now and not wait five years from now to start doing that. Our, our, our police chief has said that he's going to need about 42 additional police officers. So we need to start now looking for those 42 police officers. Our fire department said they need a new fire station in order to support the annexation. So we need to start now working on building that fire station, not five years from now. If I had continued to live on 15th Street, then I moved to 14th Street, then I moved to 12th Street, then I moved to 5th Street. When I was in ninth grade and my teacher, Mr. Dean, former commissioner Dean, took me to my first city council meeting in ninth grade. At that point, my goal was to one day be able to sit as a city commissioner. Had I continued to live on 15, 14, 12th, and 5th Street, I would not be a city commissioner today. 
And I believe that there are young men and young women that are in this area that also has the desire to one day be a city commissioner, one day to be the mayor. But unless we annex, they will never be able to fulfill that dream. So therefore, it's not just about us that are here today, but it's about the generations that are yet to come, that we provide them the opportunities to be all that they desire to be to fulfill their dream. And I don't think that there's a price tag that can be placed on humanity. And so it's the right thing to do is to annex. Yeah, um, so we're all politicians up here, so everything that we say is going to be perceived in one way or another as being political. Um, I think, during, having, again, having this conversation when we're not running for a political office, it's not gonna mitigate the concerns that this is still a political conversation. Uh, I can't help the people that feel that way. But having it during this time of year when we're not campaigning for a seat I think it's the most appropriate time to have this conversation. Um, the gentleman brought up, I'm a transplant in all sense of the word. Um, there's worldviews in this room that I don't, I can't experience, I haven't experienced. Um, I didn't go to Apopka High School. I'm not from Apopka. I'm from Central Florida, but I'm not from Apopka. But I serve Apopka because I want it to be a better home for me and my family, just like you want it to be a better home for you, you and yours. And. While I appreciate, I often look to Mrs. Boinkin as, as a, just a wealth of knowledge around the history of, of all parts of Apopkin. I, you're a tremendous asset for that. Um, but what I can't do is let a referendum 37 years ago be the mandate by which all generations future have to live by. And so, and, and it's not to say that it has to happen, but to Commissioner Smith's point is, I think there's been enough of us up here that have shown interest to see what's the art of the possible here as it relates to annexation. Yeah, these, these numbers are numbers, but how do we actually make it happen? Because at the end of the day, it's going to be the people within the un unincorporated sections of this, of this county that are ultimately gonna have to make that say. They're gonna have to go to the voter box and fill out that ballot. So there's a whole bunch of action that we could take as a sitting body to make that happen. But at the end of the day, it's going to be your decision. And so that's where I went back to, at the beginning of this conversation is all around what are, what are you hoping to get? And, and it's funny because we had a couple of speakers kind of get at the, the crux of the matter. Hey, we need speed bumps here. Or, hey, we need some more businesses here. These are the types of things that really are the drivers by which you want to see change or potential change. And so it's those types of conversations. But I, I firmly believe with Commissioner Smith is, <laughs> let's have a roadmap or a blueprint by which we can make this happen. Because at, at the end of the day, it's gonna be up to the voters to decide. We just wanna be able to give the most relevant and accurate data possible for you to make that decision. Um, because again, one of the speakers talked about it being a foundational thing. Yeah, it is. It's very foundational. Um, because again, we have a very diverse community and <laughs> That's part of our foundation for future success is to celebrate that diversity and, and make it part of our, our, our long-term success strategy. So um, I appreciate the time. I appreciate everybody that's spoken tonight. Um, my email address is kbecker at apopka.net. It's on the website. If you don't have it, please come up to me afterwards. If you wanna meet outside of this meeting setting, happy to do that. Um, my telephone number, part of public record, 407-463-5764 is my personal cell. Text me, call me. Um, willing to be that person and, and to, to the gentleman that called, called this whole board out too is being pro, more proactive on my part and I, 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 I committed to do so. So thank you. Commissioner Velasquez. First I just want to say Thank you to each and every one of you for making the effort to come out. This was something that we had been hoping for, um, especially with the second workshop, and kind of just kind of follow all the, you know, the previous commissioners. We're here for you. Um, when I was elected back in 2014, um, I considered myself a rookie at that time. 
it was very important for me to, to know the history of Apopka, especially South Apopka. And I did go out and did seek um, because I, I wanted to see, you know, where was the Hispanic community? Where was the black community? And uh, I've gotten to meet many of you personally. And it was always my desire and, and you know, how do we bring South Apopka into the city. Um, but as, as a commissioner, it was, it was difficult. I was, at that time, I was one. And I feel that with this administration and, and this new commission, I feel like we are moving forward um, because we have more commissioners on board who want it. And, and I appreciate that, you know, the more that we are out in the community and the gentleman who challenged us, He's right, you know, we need to go out into the community. We need to be on a person to person basis. And that's something that I said to him when I responded, that is, that is an effort that I will make. And um, we'll just keep talking. It's, it's a process and along the process, um, you know, a lot of things were said here that really made sense. We have a city that's growing on the north side of Apopka and yet we're ready to accommodate them with the level of services. And here we have an existing community that's asking us, they want to be part of the city and we're making, and we're providing obstacles rather than saying, let's do it. So at this point, that's where we're at right now. And uh, I appreciate all the comments that were said and even the criticism, because with criticism, you learn you know, to see things differently from different point of view. So I appreciate that. And I thank each and every one of you. And, and like Commissioner Becker said, please do reach out to us. Um, we have out our uh, emails on the website. You know, I'm D Velasquez at apopka.net. And I only give out my personal phone number. I did not take a second phone from the city because I just thought that wasn't how I want to communicate with my the constituents in all of Apopka. So my phone number is 407-432-6715. So thank you again, and please do reach out to us. Please send us your emails. Please l let us know what you want, because we are here to serve you. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Well, I'd like to thank, um, first of all, let me start off with Nicole Palmer. Thank you for opening up your facility for us, and for putting the sign out on the on 13th Street so that everybody had a chance to, to at least be a part of this discussion. I mean, it's, it's great that we had a, a much better turnout. Last, you know, at the commission meeting, we, I think we had only two people from Unincorporated that were there to speak on behalf of wh whatever they thought. And so it's nice that we got a, a much better representation of, of people that have an opinion, either good or bad, of the annexation process. I'd also like to thank our staff. I mean, they've went, it was a lot of effort to get, you know, what we think are, I want to be objective about this. It's not about, yes, it's about the numbers, but they're, they're not, I'm not tilting the scale that the numbers are, or the, what the numbers are. But I think we, we as, as, a, as a body have to have numbers to be able to justify our, our decisions, uh, not only for, for the, the annexation piece here in, in South Apopka, but also for North Apopka. Both obviously both have to vote in favor of this annexation. So it, both decisions have to be in the affirmative for this to, to move forward. And I would, I would also say, and, and, and not to throw um, Commissioner Moore under the, under the bus, but you know, ask the county for help while, you know, while we're going through this process. If there, if there are things that, that, that we're doing in the city for our residents that, that the county maybe is, is lacking, reach out to her. I mean, they're, they're, they've got, you know, obviously they have a five or six billion dollar budget where we have a hundred and fifty million dollar budget. So there, there are dollars there to, that can be used to, to make, you know, improvements and make a difference here uh, in, in the unex, un, uh, unincorporated areas of Apopka. So thank you all again for coming out and we appreciate um, all your input and look forward to a, a, a rigorous uh, debate as we move forward. Thank you.